gentlewoman from Minnesota. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I thank the representative from Massachusetts for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you. Let me be clear. House Republicans condemn the violence in Buffalo, Uvalde, Tulsa, and Philadelphia. We stand ready to work with the majority to directly address school safety, mental health, and the root causes of gun violence. Unfortunately, the bills we are considering today under the rule are nothing more than an attempt by Democrats to try to push their anti-gun agenda. H.R. 7910 is a grab bag full of far-left proposals that will not effectively address gun violence, but will severely limit America's Second Amendment rights. There are a few provisions I would like to point out. The bill raises the legal age of gun ownership to 21. This provision is very likely unconstitutional. Even a liberal district court in California has already determined with regard to similar restrictions. This bill broadens the definition of frame or receiver that, would, that could define multiple parts of the same gun as separate firearms. Each of these parts would need its own distinct serial number or risk becoming a classified ghost gun. This could turn millions of legal guns into contraband and law-abiding gun owners into felons. H.R. 2377 is another reminder that Democrats fundamentally have no respect for the Second Amendment rights. It shows their lack of respect for the Fourth Amendment rights also. This bill destroys the presumption of innocence that is the bedrock of our justice system. It does away with the notion that an individual is innocent until proven guilty and instead makes anyone subject to an extreme risk protection order guilty until proven innocent with what amounts to another version of a red flag law. They also want to mandate a system for gun storage in private homes which is unconstitutional and almost impossible to enforce without stripping even more rights from law-abiding citizens. Democrats are picking and choosing legal standards to deprive citizens of their constitutional rights based on how closely those rights are aligned with their political agenda. Furthermore, the universe of individuals who can petition a court for an extreme risk protection order under this bill is far too broad and it creates a process that is ripe for abuse. This bill will create an opportunity for a disgruntled ex-roommate or predatory, predatory domestic partner to use the judicial system to harass and burden an individual by requiring law enforcement to seize that individual's firearms and ammunition. Federal law already prohibits dangerous and unfit individuals from purchasing or possessing firearms. An individual with a misdemeanor domestic violence conviction, an individual involuntarily committed to a mental institution or adjudicated mentally defective, or an individual who is an unlawful user of controlled substances are all prohibited from possessing or purchasing a firearm already under current law. Democrats rejected an amendment that will allow for transfers of a firearm to a victim of domestic violence for self-defense. Under this bill, a friend or a neighbor trying to help the victim would be charged with gun trafficking. These bills are not only about, are not about public safety, they are about the left's anti-gun agenda. During the Judiciary Committee, while we considered this bill, the chairman of the committee conceded that the strict gun laws in liberal jurisdictions don't work because criminals are able to obtain guns elsewhere, illegally. A member from Tennessee, on that committee admitted that the Democrats' bills will make it harder for law-abiding Americans to exercise their Second Amendment rights. Another member, one from New York, threatened to abolish the filibuster and pack the Supreme Court if any of our nation's checks and balances stood in the way of the Democrats' agenda to trample the Second Amendment. The majority will argue that these are common sense proposals, but they fail to explain the details and the real effects of these provisions. And what are law-abiding gun owners concerned about? They are concerned about the attack on their constitutional rights provided in the Second Amendment. All of us recognize the recent tragedies and our heart goes out to the parents, the families and communities, but the root causes must be addressed. Simply attacking law-abiding gun owners will not solve the problem. Addressing the causes will. 
House Republicans stand ready to address the root causes of this senseless acts of violence, but not at the cost of America's constitutional rights. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I oppose the rule, and I ask members to do the same. I reserve.